that you already heard that question, but who is working for any... Uh -huh. Is it better? Uh, who is working for any social media agency? Cool, now you listen because we, work, we are working for you uh, at Brand Week. Uh, hi everyone, my name is David Sabo. I'm the uh, tech entrepreneur from Hungary and the uh, founder and CEO of Brand Week. Uh, we are working for uh, creating a very customized, uh, personalized uh, customer experiences for our clients uh, that creates a win-win sort of situation for both the end clients and the agencies who are working for them. Um, here are three random facts about Facebook. It just seems random. The first one is that 79% of social media logins comes from online retail. What does that mean? Uh, it, it means when uh, someone log, logs into a website uh, via Facebook, uh, the owner of the website will know lots of things about this user. We are working with this information uh, during my, my presentation later. Uh, the other uh, totally random fact is uh, says that the customer acquisition from Facebook is uh, achievable goal for B2C companies in 70% uh, of uh, the situations. This, uh, this means that uh, B2C companies reported that 70% uh, of them uh, is already uh, acquiring successfully customers uh, from Facebook. The third totally random fact is 2.5 billion content is shared uh, per day on Facebook. This is why the, the, uh, pre in the previous presentation the statement that content is the king uh, is true because there are lots of lots of content which still has a lot of information about the people who share this information. So we are talking about tons of data. It's, it's like big data. It's not big data, it's huge data. Uh, we, are, we are talking about Facebook likes, photos, groups, even status updates, friends list, everything. It's kind of a big brother stuff for, I don't know, I hope all of you have a, a great privacy policy uh, when you are working with Facebook because Facebook has. Um, so we are talking about big data. Uh, the old uh, wisdom of big data is uh, that you need to find the story behind your data. You need to find the story that the data wants to tell you uh, instead of figuring out anything about your customer uh, in advance. So basically you are need to find the story of your customer and you are need to find out how can you fit in the story. Because if you share your story with your customer and the story is the same, those customers will not only be customers, but they, can, they will become uh, uh, ambassadors of your company, the ambassadors of your brand. Or, and we will use this word in this presentation uh, very, very uh, often, they will become influencers of your, of your brand. So the question one is, who is he? Who is your customer that you, are want, you, you want to, to talk to? Who is your, your, your best customer from social media? As I told you before, if you share a story, you have a story, they have a story, there are parts that are shared, that, that, that both of you share with each other, where, where lots of parts or the whole story is shared with, you, with each other, uh, that, then uh, you will know that these customers are your influencers. Uh, the question is how can you distinguish those who share a little part and uh, those who share a big part of your, uh, your story. Uh, okay, these influencers are active, loyal, and engaged ones. This, this is obvious, I think, um, but we need, to, we need to make it clear because, because uh, defining who is an influencer can be lead us to many different ways. But uh, in this presentation, we will think of an influencer who is active and participative and, and, uh, and loyal and also engaged. Okay, so uh, we are talking about uh, combining influencer marketing and social media. I'm talking about uh, if you are creating your content strategy, if you're creating your social media strategy, 
I think you should focus on your influencers. You should focus on a specified group of people instead focusing on your whole community. Why, why am I saying this? I, I'm saying this because uh, only those who, uh, who are your influencers uh, will care about what you say and only those will become the ambassadors of your brand and only those can help you uh, sustaining your growth on social media because they are the influencers and they are good for you. So what, what can you do with influencers? You can uh, create strategies, you can, you can uh, marketing to influencers to increase your awareness uh, between this core group of your whole community. You can create the marketing through your influencers because these ambassadors will be the ones who will increase your market awareness and you can create your marketing with influencers to uh, achieve that these influencers will become real ambassadors of your brand. But the question is still on the table. We, are, we, are, we have the definition of influencer, but who are they? I mean, really, who are they? I, I, I'm, I'm thinking when I'm asking this question about where can I find them? How, does they, how do they look like? What are their needs? What are their personalities? I really hate these classic demographic and interest-based targeting stuff. I think it, it's quite old and, 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 and I, I don't like it. it. It's not effective. So the first, first thing is what should we do to find these influencers? This is a plain, simple approach to finding these influencers. We are... We are uh, uh, analyzing two different things. The first one is, is this user active or not? Um, it's, it's, there is a problem with this approach. If you are, you are uh, sorting your, your uh, fans based on their activity, you will include those fans who are active, but they are not really engaged. So uh, what if you, you sort your, your uh, fans based on the engagement? Well, then you could include those fans who are engaged, but they are not really active. But what if you are, uh, you are uh, analyzing the correlation between post engagement and user activity? In that case, you will find those who are active and engaged and loyal, and those will be your influencers. And the, this is the, the, the tiny blue uh, circle on the top of the image. In, the, in, the, in reality, we are doing this here at Brandby and uh, we are giving agencies a, a bunch of users who are their influencers and we just give them this list and do whatever you want to do with them. Um, of course, it's not completely true, but it sounds good, I think. Um, so basically, we are telling them to use these, use these users to target advertising, to target advertisements, uh, because if you are creating PBC campaigns, uh, you are looking for users who fit your criteria, I, I, it, I mean any of your criteria, and they will be active and engaged. But how can you predict that? You, you, you can't. Actually, you can't predict that. But if we hack this situation, and based, based, on, uh, based our advertisement campaigns on these influencers, um, we who are already engaged and already loyal and they are providing a lots of lots of information about themselves we will be able to hack this situation and we will be able to deliver more results or, or will be uh, actually we will um, these are the numbers we are experiencing since May uh, these are recurring numbers uh, no matter if we are talking about FMCG or, or automotive industries or, or anything, um, well, if you are creating look-like audiences based on your influencers, uh, you will uh, experience a 75% of the drop of your fan acquisition cost on average and, and uh, almost three times more fans with the same budget. Um, and the thing is that they will be 1.5 times more uh, engaged, uh, so they will be much more relevant. So the, these are this this is one way to, to use influencers for for your social media strategy. 
Uh, but the question is, how can you you dig deeper and and uh, uh, how can you identify the true personality behind the user ID? Because we want to know that. As I told you before, I hate these classic targeting techniques. I really want to know um, who is this person. Four years ago, I, I was working as a salesperson. And, and then I figured out that if I spend my first hour with the customer just with the purpose of knowing, getting to knowing him, I will be able to create my sales strategy much more effective. And we, are, we, uh, we based on our, our researches on this, this goal. So let's find, it, let's find the story behind this big data. Um, we, we are, when I'm talking about personality, I'm thinking of the standard five-factor model. Who, who uh, has any time heard of this big five stuff? All right, big five is uh, now nowadays is the most uh, widely accepted approach to analyzing someone's personality. It, it analyzes the openness to new experiences, or you could say, analyzes the intellect. Uh, agreeableness, consciousness, extraversion, or neuroticism, or you can say emotional stability. Um, with these five uh, traits, you are able to describe any person on the world. This is the mostly and widely accepted uh, approach of uh, psychology nowadays. And uh, as I told you, um, we uh, started to dig deeper and, uh, and we wanted to find something that will be able to tell us someone, someone's personality uh, based on this data. I'm thinking just number of Facebook likes, groups, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then we found these guys at Cambridge University uh, who are, I think they are fantastic. They uh, have created a research uh, based on six million different Facebook users and found out these correlations between Facebook behavior and uh, personality traits. So for an example, uh, one's openness to new experiences or one's uh, intellect uh, is, has a positive correlation with the number of Facebook likes, groups, and status updates. So when I say that based on how many uh, Facebook pages did you like, I can tell you uh, are, are you an open to new experiences or not, that is true and is found to be significant in a pretty high confidence level. So here is this paradox. Everyone is different, yet we have all this common information about our customers. Um, they are, they are uh, John Doe and John Smith. So let's look at John and John. They are uh, 39 years old, managers, have two kids, average income. Uh, they are both influencers of your brand, and they both like cars, fishing, and cooking. Uh, OK, the question is, how should you approach John? He's an extroverted person, quite agreeable, uh, but he's a bit unsorted. He's quite open to new experiences but uh, he is kind of uh, unstable when it comes to emotions. How should you approach him? He's an influencer. You need him, and he needs you. Uh, think about that uh, just for a bit. And then I will ask you the second question. How should you approach John, who is the same person, but yet he has a very different personality? He is quite introverted, not so agreeable, but he is quite a conscious as people, by a person, uh, and he is, a, he is quite, a, quite an open-minded uh, person, and he is emotionally stable. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if, you, if, you, if you're getting my point. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, uh, this is creating a new dimension of, uh, of defining your target market, because every target, every company, every brand, every product, and every service has their specific type of people who are uh, share these traits uh, and these points of traits. So you can imagine this from uh, on a scale from one to one hundred. Uh, now you have the technology uh, to create these target groups and create these filters 
uh, driven by data. And, and, and uh, you can forget your hunch because data will tell you everything. And uh, if, you are, if you are, we are thinking about personalized strategies on social media, I'm thinking about that social media uh, now has the ability and has the opportunity to become the number one data source for marketing and sales processes because social media is the number one data source to, to tell the marketer and the salesperson who is my customer, who really is my customer. And, and uh, then uh, we can talk about social leads. When you give the salespeople leads with fed with personality information, so the sales representatives will spare this first one hour of getting to knowing him, getting to knowing your customer, and trying to figure out uh, who is he or who is she. Uh, this is also means that uh, that is at some point social media marketers uh, should become or can become a social media analyst. Or, or we could say social scientists, but as I see it uh, here in the industry uh, from, from Hungary right now, I think that, that this is a trend that already goes on. Um, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm here for you, and um, that's all.